Welcome to Golden Mastermind Seminars Radio with your host, Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs, welcome everyone. Good to be here with you on Two for Tuesday, Golden Mastermind Seminars podcast, Facebook Live. This is where the podcast is recorded and then uploaded onto my podcast on my website. So thank you very much. Tracy, good to see you. I'm just getting dialed in here. It's been a highly productive morning and now into the afternoon. I've been coaching all day back to back and will coach all day back to back. Tracy, you are crushing it. Good to be here with you this afternoon. I look forward to coaching you next week. Good afternoon, everyone. Lori, good to see you from Orange County, California. It is a breathe, release, and let go day. Jared, good to see you. Where are you today, Jared? It is good to be here with you this afternoon, Jesse Johnson. This is one of my favorite topics. I've covered this topic many, many, many times, and it is called the power of word. Now, right there, look at that picture. That picture was taken many years ago, and I am wearing a very similar shirt right here in my office producing my podcast. The origin of what is today's podcast, oh my oh my God, T.C. Bradley has joined me, and he says, how can I be the man when you are the man? I will tell you some history about my very good friend T.C. Bradley in just a moment, because T.C. Bradley has been, he and I have been connected since 1996. He and I are true patriots, going back to an organization in the 90s where David Icke was one of our keynote speakers, along with G. Edward Griffin, in 1996. Josh Waxman, say hello to T.C. Bradley. T.C. Bradley, say hello to Josh Waxman. For those of you who do not know who T.C. Bradley is, T.C. Bradley is the founder of God Made Millionaire. He is a world-renowned celebrity in the Christian world, and he's a very, very good friend of mine. And I am proud to say he was my upline, my upline in a direct sales business. In 1996, I entered his ad in the USA Today. This is just so much history between him and me. I answered his ad in the USA Today when I was $100,000 in credit card debt. He was that guy, Tracy. I was $100,000 in credit card debt. John Collins, T.C. Bradley is on today's Facebook Live. T.C. Bradley placed an ad in the USA Today, and I answered it in Los Angeles, California on December 26th, 1996. I was with my good friend David Brennan. I was destitute financially. I was visiting a friend at Christmas, contemplating my next move. I was completely in the NFL club, no funds left, no friends left, and not for long. I answered this ad, and through that ad, I I actually crossed the bridge. TC watched the entire transformation. He was my upline in that business. He and I went to our first seminars together. He and I saw David Icke speak together. It was mind-blowing. We saw him in, we, we went to an event in the Bahamas, then we saw David Ike in we saw David Ike in Jamaica. Then we saw him again in Aruba, and he and I were became blood brothers through that through that vigil. He and I then went separate ways, and that went and he he went on to become a very successful real estate uh, influencer and was an online marketer, and then really found his calling with God Made Millionaire. So if you are not following God Made Millionaire. I highly recommend TC. He and I have been friends since 1996 and been through many, many exceptional experiences together. And so TC speaks the word of God. So I'm going to speak the power of word today. And as a as a Christian and a man of of faith myself, it is very important that you become in alignment with yourself. So you're not in an overwhelmed state in a contradiction. And the way most Americans speak, their word is not their law. What most Americans speak is they speak a language of non-commitment. For those of you who have coached with me for the last few years, thank you very much for following my content. Thank you very much for following what I've been teaching to you and how to be able to be clear in your communication style. Because if you're not clear in your communication, if you're communicating that you're not in faith, if you're not, if you're not, if you're not hearing the word of God, if you're not in alignment, if you're not in high consciousness, then you're going to be in anxiety, fear, and doubt, which will keep you in brain fog and overwhelmed miscommunication. 
and then you'll have anxiety about the outcome that hasn't happened. You'll have challenges communicating with people. You'll tell yourself stories about the outcome that hasn't happened. And then you'll continue to stay in this overwhelmed, avoidant state of procrastination, which is what most of the world does. Now, if you have reached a place where the pain is great enough, you do not have to be at rock bottom. When I found TC, I was challenged financially, but I wasn't at rock bottom. I'd already been there. So my faith was strong. What I required was an opportunity, and that's what TC provided for me. I saw it immediately. I didn't have the money. I was very resourceful. I had it in 24 hours. I started that business, and that business is a whole different level of cost in the 90s than it is today. So I was able to find a, find the startup cost, start that business, and then I earned myself to the top income earner in that company over a two-year period. Now, that, that was virtually the outhouse to the penthouse, which you do not have to do that. You don't have to be in that space. But wherever you are right now, it's important that your word is your law and your word is your wand. In 1991, I bought this book, The Game of Life and How to Play It, a very small little book published by DeVos Publishing written by a woman named, it's actually The Writings of Florence Scoville Shin. So I have bookmarked this book because I've gone to it many times. The Power of Word, right there. The Power of Word. Your word is your wand, and Florence Scoville Shin is also very famous for saying that words do not return void. Now that book was written in 1925, and then this is a compilation of some of her other writings, a very, very small book written in 1940, and it is called The Power of the Spoken Word. And this is where I really learned that word is law. From that content that I started in 1991, I became aware of my word choices. I became aware of how negative I was speaking at times. I became aware of how anxious, how much doubt, and how much fear I was in by the choice of my words. My words were fostering my actions. My actions were fostering my words. When I started to understand context and application of word is law, I began to only speak words of prosperity, words of definition, words of commitment, rather than words of lack, rather than words of poverty consciousness, and I stopped speaking what I didn't want to see happen. Now the power of word is also enhanced by the power of belief. So your belief is your level of certainty. Words without belief are a wish. You can write that down, I'll say it again. Words without a belief are a wish, and that's a hope. I hope, I wish it happens. Well, it doesn't happen like that. So in the power of word, what you're learning to speak is the, is the language of letting go. Right there on the syllabus, on the email, the language of letting go. Letting go, and this is the context and the application of letting go. People ask me every day, how do I let go? It's gonna be the same recipe that I've been teaching for 25 years, Although I've continued to enhance my understanding of letting go, the application, the context, and then the teachings of it. So I first learned letting go in the 12-step program of let go and let God. I didn't really understand that because I, I had entered the 12-step programs as an atheist, and then I found God and accept Jesus Christ as my Savior in 1994. So I, I, was, I was an atheist, agnostic, through all of my addictive years, I had no belief, I had no real hope. I was just hanging on to a thread by the end of my addictions. So when I found the power of word and the power of God, it was a new, it was, it was a completely new philosophy, it was a new context to me. I had not been experienced that type of, of insight and wisdom before. So that was really a bridge that I crossed. So I learned let go and let God. I later learned the skill of letting go along with the power of God but there is a science to letting go in an application, and once you begin to master it, then your word has a different level of meaning. It has a different level of power. So letting go is the ability, and this is the power of word, letting go is your ability to separate your feelings from the events that shape them. Now, if you're reading the book Letting Go, and you're actually reading the book, not listening to it on Audible or not Kindle. I mean the real book, the real book where you can highlight it, the real book where you have it in your hand, where it's tangible. Kindle's a good option, and listening to the content is exceptional. The book, though, is the next level because you're actually reading the word. Now, you're reading the word in Kindle, but it's still a different version when it's in your hands because you actually have the words in your hand. So the law is in your hand. 
And the law of letting go is to separate your feelings. So that means that there are events that have shaped your feelings. Now your feelings that you hold on to are gonna be repressed or suppressed. This is what creates what is called stress. This is what is called anxiety. This is what causes brain fog, is the repressed feelings and the suppressed feelings. The suppressed feelings are the feelings we hold on to that we use to sabotage ourselves. The repressed feelings are the feelings that we have stuffed, buried, forgotten, don't wanna look at, are too ashamed to address, and the, our word on that law is, I don't know, I don't remember. And many people want to believe they had a good childhood or a okay childhood when they're not really clear with themselves about the trauma, the criticism, the violations, and the situations that happened to them on the playground, in the household, in multitude of situations. And then we continue to, to repress these feelings, which creates our brain fog. Then we hold on to these feelings, sabotaging ourselves over and over. We sabotage our relationships. We sabotage our businesses because we're really unconsciously not good enough. And then that's the word that we are casting. So in, in really starting this process, you're casting the burden. You're casting the burden of the Christ within. You're casting the burden. You're letting go. You're separating your feelings from the events that shape them. It requires observation, objective perspective. You look at the movie of your life and understand those are the facts of your life, but those facts don't have to be who you are today. That's who you once were. Who you are today is you're a brilliant human being, your soul having a human experience right here in one of those challenging times in world history. It's important you understand how challenging it is. You don't edify the challenges, but you are aware of them. We are under acute trauma-based mind control. Every single day, there's something that, that's new, that's going to be more expensive, that's more challenging. And within all of that, there are still amazing opportunities for you to be your best self. There's business opportunities, there's spiritual opportunities, there's life itself, there's nature, there's relationships, there's animals. There's many, many opportunities for you to find yourself and be your best self. And that will happen through the power of word by saying, I am good enough, I am lovable, I am capable. But along with the word, which is word, that is affirm, that is to affirm, that's an affirmation, but there, there has to have a belief in it. So the belief is the fuel. With The word without the fuel, without belief, is a car that won't go anywhere. Once you add belief to your word, then the power of your word, your word is your law. And that, that means you speak into existence the reality you will manifest. Manifestation comes from from naval times. So the manifest, manifest destiny, you're, what's on your manifest. I mean, that that's really clearly defined goal setting in 90 day game plan, one day game plan, where you're clear about the outcome you seek to create. You're not just hoping for a miracle. You're not wishing for it to happen. You live in a state called no, not N-O, but K-N-O-W, because you now know. You know that you will not be denied. And when you live in that state, there is no failure. But when you're worried about failure, when you're worried about failing, that's your word, that's your law, because that means you don't really commit. Anytime you have hesitation, you're in doubt. And doubt is not faith. So you, 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 it requires you to be in faith and in belief as much as possible. You're human. You're going to relapse. You're going to relapse emotionally. That doesn't mean you're going to relapse on alcohol or food. And an emotional relapse is not a relapse on alcohol or any substance, although it can be very detrimental if you continue to stay in the brain fog of it. The key to letting go is to understand the context of it the separation between a feeling and event and shape them. That means that you understand what that means, that they aren't just words that go over your head. You actually grasp it. You begin to live it. You're aware of your character defects. You're able to let go of sensitivity and defensiveness. And you're, instead of saying you're sensitive and defensive, you start to tell yourself you're open. There's no such thing as constructive criticism because the two words don't fit together. So if you're if someone's giving you insight, receive it as insight. Don't turn it into criticism. If someone is criticizing you, be humble enough not to feel humiliated. Be humble enough not to feel rejected. That's what letting go is. Letting go is your ability to separate yourself from the past criticisms and rejections you experienced, where you can be here right now today and you're so humble about who you are and where you're going that you don't take any of that as 
as criticism or negativity. You're able to breathe, release, and let go. You're able to separate your feelings from the events that shaped them because you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings. There's two types of breathing that can really assist you today. And I mean, this, this can really assist you to let go. So it's a, it's a two-component breathing. You can do it through your nose. You can do it through your mouth. Now, my client, Josh Morin, is very skilled at this. Josh Waxman has been in rooms with me for the last going on year and a half. Kevin Woods, you've seen this yourself. Some of you have been to the three events that I've hosted so far. Jared, you've seen this. But I'm going to cover two types of breathing for you today. It's a double breath, or and you can either do it through the mouth or you can do it through the nose. So the double breath is you take a breath from your abdomen and you bring it up to the back of your mouth. Diane, so good to see you today. Diane has hosted many, many events for me. Diane T.C. Bradley is on today's Facebook Live. I know you, I know you know who he is. So the double breath. <gasps> So you take the first one, and then on top of the first one, you take the second one. Oh. You release it, and then you follow it with the word, the power of word release, because you are now, you are empowering your, your mind-body connection. You are telling your brain and your body to release. You're not losing anything, you're releasing. So in weight loss, you're not losing weight. What the objective is in the power of word is to separate your feelings. So in, if, you're, if your body is holding on to weight, the affirmation is I'm releasing the feelings I stuff that hold my weight in place. I am releasing my feelings I stuff that holds my weight in place. It's a completely different context. So listen, the words, I'm, I, wanna I want to lose 40 pounds. I'm releasing the feelings that holds the 40 pounds in place. I'm committed to my recovery. So that, that's the power of word. You can, word has no meaning until it's backed by a belief. Word has no meaning until it's backed by commitment. This is why so many people are commitment phobic. Commitment phobic ism, if that's even a word, commitment phobic. See, the reason that people don't commit is because they have deep anxiety about being responsible, which the word respondability is. Now, for those of you who come to my advanced event, I, it has really clicked for me the last five years. I've crossed the bridge in understanding the agenda, the world order. I mean, so much comes to me every single day. It's like a, I mean, an encyclopedia downloading the content behind the veil, along with I'm also understanding about quantum physics, and then I can put it all together about the trauma-based mind control. I mean, the, the content I've downloaded in the last two years is would be next level another league. I mean, it just comes to me like this. And I know that that is my purpose. And that is the message that I am delivered in my power of word is to understand how to let go of brain fog, trauma-based mind control, the symbolism, the signs, the music, the movies, the sports, and how we've been conditioned to behave so we can be marched right to the red pill, blue pill, and the other situations that you see going on right now. So once you have the courage, because that's the, that's the front door to freedom. Cur now, the truth doesn't set you free. The truth gives you the playing field. So when you see the playing field, now you know how to navigate it. You cannot navigate the playing field when you're in doubt. You cannot navigate the playing field when you're avoiding it. It's important if you're, a, if you're, if you're someone who really is, is serious about living the, the life that there is right now, that you understand what is happening in the world and you participate in the components of it that's going to empower you and you do your best to neutralize your feelings about the other situations that you see happening. It requires a lot of courage to do that. Courage is a quality that never goes out of fashion and there's always a market for it. So in that courage, that courage that you now access, that's the word, it gives you the front door to consciousness. Once you cross the bridge into consciousness, you're in the know, you're in the now, you're aware, and you understand. That becomes your word, and that word is your law. Because when you know, then you don't doubt. So when you know, you're able to trust yourself, you're able to trust your intuit, you're able to put your belief into it, your intuition. So your intuition becomes your compass, and that compass is a direct reflection of what you're letting go of. Because once the brain fog begins to disseminate and lift, once you let go of your anxiety about responding ability, and then you teach yourself, which I'm teaching you, is how to let go of the fight or flight reflex. The fight or flight reflex 
is a reaction. Your objective in, in word is law and being good enough and knowing is that rather than reacting, you're responding. You respond to stimulus, which now gives you stimulus response, which allows you to move conversations, close sales, ask for commitments, ask for the outcome you seek to create. And you're doing that by mastering your word and mastering the law of the word and being able to effectively let go so that you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings. And those of you who find yourself downloading in higher consciousness, feel free to let me know that you're seeing that, your understanding is coming to you like this, you're watching the content, you're receiving the content, and you're a lot more in the know. And in that, in that state of consciousness, I mean, I've had this happen so many times. It's like, I know someone's hiring me today. I feel it. This isn't a wish. It's a no. I mean, I feel it. I mean, I know it. And so when you, when you start to live your soul's purpose and you stop avoiding how good you can be and you stop letting go of all these terms like greatness, you're not here to be great. You're here to be you. And instead of trying to be great and focusing on recognition, You'll get, rec you'll get recognized for your value and service, which is much more important than for accomplishments. Your value and service is what are accomplishments, and that's what people pay you for. They don't, I mean, all, I mean I've, had the, I've had the watches and all those things and walk the stages. They're still part of the game, and they're, under, they're important. What's most important is that you value yourself enough to deliver great service. And it's that service that people are coming back for. But you can't service others when you can't service yourself. When you're so overwhelmed that you're overwhelmed being overwhelmed, you can't be of service. Now, you're not serving. Your service is different. It's service and value that allows you to create your value in free enterprise. It's not serving. You're not a waiter. You're not, you're, you're not serving people. You're being of service. That's, see, that's word. There's a big difference between serving and service. And you're not a servant. You're servicing. You want to be clear on this. There's distinctions in words. And when you become a wordsmith, you understand like a blacksmith. You become a wordsmith, then your word becomes your law. And you speak only words of prosperity, only words of, of inspiration. You don't live in lack. You don't live in an overwhelmed state. You're not in poverty consciousness. You can have no money and still be prosperous because your word is your law, not your money. Your, your money is not your law. Your money is a byproduct of skills and the skills that you create. You can have money and still have no self-esteem. Your esteem is your law. Your esteem of being good enough, being lovable, being of service and being value. That's what people will pay you for. They won't pay you or they won't compensate you because you're smart. They'll compensate you because you have value. And the more value that you bring to the free market and the more and the better your service is. This is why I respond to all messages, all calls. That myself and my assistant return everything we can and we do it now. We live in the now habit. When you live in that habit of now, then you are no longer overwhelmed. One of the number one words you let go of is overwhelm. Follow up with kinda. Let go of words guess and the three words I don't know. Monitor your commu communication. Speak into existence reality you're manifesting. Speak into existence reality you can create in short time frames. Have a day goal, a week goal, a month goal, a 90-day game plan. Have a daily method of operation that you operate your business and your life in. And have clarity in your vision. I mean, this is how I've lived. I grew up in a town this big. No one mentored me. I'm self-taught. I have read hundreds and hundreds of books, listened to Napoleon Hill thousands of times, Frederick Lehrman in the 90s, Stuart Wilder read all of his books countless times, read multiple books of David Hawkins, readers are leaders, I've been reading since I was a child, I've read thousands of books, fiction, nonfiction, history, new history, conspiracy, personal development, self-improvement, quantum physics and all the other situations. I've shared the stage with multiple masters and continue to speak the power of word. My name is Jeffrey Combs. I'm the president and founder of Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. Hunter, so good to see you. Jessica, thank you for hiring me to your coach. Jim, I am honored to have been your coach. Heather, so good to see you this afternoon. Michelle, thank you for being here. Let's see, who else do I see here? Oh my God, there's so many awesome people here today. Lynn Ann, thank you. Good, thank you everyone for being here. 
this afternoon. I'm honored to have been your coach, your friend, and be able to give you some inspiration. Follow my friend T.C. Bradley. I highly endorse T.C. He is the founder of the television show, online television show, God Made Millionaire. I've known T.C. since 1996. And he put a little ad. Here's the ad that T.C. put in the USA Today that I answered. His ad said, I refuse to let you fail. That's exactly what it said. I answered it with a brick set, with a brick telephone. I had a root beer colored beeper, a 1990, a 1990 Honda Accord. I was sitting in a parking lot at an AM PM mini mark on Olympus Olympic and Beverly Glen Avenue in West Los Angeles, about two miles from Beverly Hills. I bought a USA Today on a Friday, December 26th. 1996. Call, call that ad. T.C. Bradley answered the ad and he's on the call today. Have a great afternoon, everyone.